This is episode 206 of the A Bar Above podcast, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into whiskey cocktails, and we're going to talk about some amazing flavor combinations, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome back to the A Bar Above podcast. I still have a hard time saying that. It used to be uh, Mixology Talk for the longest time, but it is now the A Bar Above podcast. Uh, so today we are continuing to talk about whiskey uh and today we're going to be focusing on whiskey and cocktails so today i have a special guest sneha um who is going to be sharing his passion around whiskey cocktails so welcome to the podcast man hey chris glad yeah. to be here yeah thanks, thanks, for thanks for joining us man so um before we kind of get started in delving into whiskey cocktails with you um i always like to ask people kind of how you got introduced to cocktails and what made you really kind of passionate about making cocktails? Um, so in my case, I think the year was 2013. And uh, I believe one of our friends, um, you know, he invited me to his house for the long weekend. And uh, he said, you know, just come over. We're going to have some drinks and, you know, some good food, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, this time maybe instead of just having, you know, your regular drinks like, you know, whiskey and Coke, rum and Coke. Maybe let's try to make, you know, some cocktails. So I just started researching and then, you know, I found out that, you know, you can mix it with different type of fruit juices, things like that. So uh, that weekend, we just started with that, you know, just liquor and fruit juices. That uh -huh. was like a basic cocktail, right? And uh, it, it was interesting. So, you know, instead of having just the liquor, you could pair it with different ingredients, different flavors. So after that weekend, you know, I just started my research. It was kind of interesting. So, you know, I started reading stuff, uh, looking for YouTube videos on, you know, how to make cocktails. And then I guess after that, it was like every weekend I used to take a trip to the liquor store and, you know, just go through aisles and, you know, just try to check bottles. You know, there were so many different bottles, different liquors, different liqueurs. Uh -huh. So that that really got me interested, you know, and I used to get like a couple of bottles uh, back home, try to check, you know, if there, there are any cocktails that I can make with those uh, liquors, those liqueurs. And, you know, just uh, the ball started rolling and then I've been doing it ever since. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a, um, a lot of how people get introduced to it. And I think the thing that always surprised me about um, cocktails is how expensive it adds up to be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> so you know, when you when you go to the liquor store and you throw a couple of yeah. there, you know, it it, adds it does up real yeah. quick. Yep, yep. Because yeah. I mean, especially here in the US, there are every liquor store has so many choices. I mean, so many different type of whiskeys, gins. Um, it's like you know the choices are boundless. So you know. Every they time really are go, limitless. I mean, yeah. It's incredible what's happened to basically every kind of spirit category. Um, you know, there, there, when I started attending bar back in 2003, there were probably five gins you could buy and, you know, right. four spirit, four brown spirit or um, bourbons that you could buy. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you might have been able to find a rye, but that is definitely not the case today. And it really, um, I think it allows people to be super creative and explore different flavor combinations because there's just so much more out there. So uh, right. I'm pretty excited yeah. about the choices we have today too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right today is like, you know, like there are so many choices, like it's, it's almost like a main base ingredient, right? I guess back then people didn't really know about dry whiskey. It was like bourbon or scotch, but today we have so many choices. You have Japanese whiskeys, you know, which are, I guess up and coming, one of the best in the world. So yeah, a lot of great choices out there. So yeah, it does become pretty expensive. <laughs> it does. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it adds up quick. Um, so before we kind of dive into like whiskey cocktails, because um, I know you're super passionate about it and I'm excited mm -hmm. to talk to you about that, but outside of the realm of whiskey cocktails, what are some of your other uh, classic or um, other spirit cocktails that you really love too? Mm, um, since I started uh, like, I've been sort of uh, infatuated by different spirits. So when I started, I guess it was gin. You know, when I started getting into cocktails, I used to get all the different kind of gins and kind of play with them. Then it was whiskey. I started getting to whiskey, bourbon, rye. Uh, right now, I would say it's it's like uh, tequila. 
and Mescal, mm-hmm. all those agave spirits. So yeah, I'm right now I'm just exploring those uh, other than whiskey, of course. Yeah, but those those are the spirits that you know. Every time I, I go to a bar, I would just I'll just try to search, you know, if a cocktail has uh, tequila or mezcal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I would try to get that. So, yeah, that is something that I'm exploring right now. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, there's no limit to how, how many uh, cool cocktails are out, especially in, uh, I know you live in the area here too as well. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so yeah. many great cocktail bars like everywhere. It's it's pretty great. San Diego is, yeah, yeah. It's a lo- lot of uh, amazing bars yeah. around. Um, yeah, perfect. So uh, on that note, what are some of your favorite whiskey cocktails? So for me, uh, when you say whiskey, I'm a whiskey sour kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I like sour sour cocktails in general. Uh, so a whiskey sour, uh, basic classic whiskey sour is, a, is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, and then different riffs like the penicillin, the paper plane, and... Uh, uh, in stirred cocktails, I would say like the Boulevardier, uh, specifically the Banana Boulevardier. I have one of my favorite Banana Boulevardier. That sounds it's, amazing. You should try it. It's it's amazing. I mean, banana with whiskey, I think it really pairs well, especially in stirred cocktails. So, uh, and then uh, there is a banana old fashioned. So uh, there's a bar raised by wolves, uh-huh. and they have this island old fashioned. So, which is like whiskey with uh, banana coconut liqueur and then some bitters and it's it's just out of this world. So it's, it's really amazing. So that is like one of my favorite cocktails. And then um, th- there is one other cocktail I would like to mention, like that is, I guess, my most favorite cocktail in the whole world. So mm-hmm. it's made with uh, scotch whiskey, uh, uh, some uh, red vermouth. And then Campari, Grenadine, and it's topped with coffee tonic. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So first time I ever heard of it, I was like, I mean, I haven't seen whiskey cocktails with you know all these different kind of flavors, especially coffee and then tonic. And I had it. I made it at home, and it was just out of this world. So that is one of my favorite cocktails. <laughs> do you, so do you remember the name of the cocktail? Did you? Oh yeah, yeah. It it's, online? Yes, it's called the Black Eagle. Uh-huh. by Martin Hudak. So he made the cocktail when he was working as a bartender back at the Savoy, the American mm-hmm. bar at Savoy. And maybe I was just, you know, going through YouTube videos, um, uh, checking out recipes from different bars and I came across this recipe and I was like, that's pretty interesting. And the then I made it. The combination does not sound like it would be pleasant, but I yeah. know I've had many drinks like that where like on paper is like, no. Yeah, it and you try like, but- oh my God. That's so good. This is one of those cocktails. Definitely a must try. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to uh, try that one now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. So before we kind of get into kind of the nitty gritty of um, some of these, um, what styles of whiskey do you kind of tend to lean on when you're making whiskey cocktails? Because there's a big, I mean, when we talk about whiskey, that's kind of like the parent category, right? And then yeah. inside of whiskey, um, you have all the kind of smaller usually geographically based ones like Japanese whiskey, American whiskey, specifically bourbon, rye, that stuff, um, Canadian. And they all kind of have different elements and different kind of focuses on the flavors they provide. You might just kind of talk about just real quick, some generalizations around categories and kind of the, the notes and flavor profiles that you typically would get with something like that. So coming like coming where I come from, like from India, mm-hmm. we almost have only scotch whiskey okay. so yeah yeah that's that's a big thing right there so uh it's only natural that i lean towards scotch whiskey um but i think for sour drinks i tend to go with bourbon or rye i think uh bourbon tends to be a little more sweet rye has a little more character it's a little more spicy mm-hmm. uh so for sour drinks i definitely try to go with either bourbon or rye but then when it comes to stir drinks or just, you know, sipping uh, just on the rocks or making a whiskey highball, I try to go with scotch. I think uh, according to me, I think scotch tends to be a little more crisp. Uh, you know, you get those like uh, fruit flavors, like the apple flavor. And then as you go 
towards darker whiskies, you get like a, a dark fruit and chocolate flavors. So definitely for stirred drinks, I try to stick with like scotch mm-hmm. um, or even Irish because Irish tends to be a little more light and very close to scotch whiskies. But for sour, uh, definitely uh, rye is one of my favorites and bourbon, of course. Yeah, so, nice. Excellent. And then, yeah. And then uh, you have Japanese whiskey, which tends to be a little more exquisite. So I try to use it for like uh, just sipping on the rocks or maybe mm-hmm. making like a very simple and perfect highball, you know, like perfect crystal clear ice, you know, putting some Japanese whiskey with soda and a lemon twist. Uh, I tend to do that with Japanese whiskeys. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And I know that um, Japanese whiskeys tends to kind of mirror a lot of Scotch uh, whiskeys as well and kind of like yes. the production and history and all that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I could I could definitely see that. Now, when you talk about Scotch in cocktails, are you talking more like Islay Scotch, like the big dominant PD styles or kind of like the more subtle kind of Highland? I'm kind of using app, you know, some pretty vague terms, but like Highland tends to be a little bit more smooth and more honeyed and um, right, right. You, which one of those do you tend to? I guess I'm talking about the Highland ones, mm-hmm. uh, not very smoky, but darker flavors. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if you go with Isla Scotch, uh, then I think uh, personally, I like it with sour drinks because uh, for Isla Scotch, it's very smoky, very, you know, it has a lot of peat. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like an acquired taste. So, you know, you can't just, once you open a bottle of Isla Scotch and you just, you know, smell it, you're going to be like, you know, it's it's not, it's like nothing I've ever smelled before. So I think in sour drinks, you can just marry it with, you know, different fruits and other sort of different flavors mm-hmm. that will mild the, you know, the peat and the smoke. And, you know, it will get you acquired to the taste and then maybe you can go to sipping Isla Scotch because it tends to be so smoky. Uh, but mostly for stir drinks, you know, just the, the Highland Scotch, uh, which is like dark mm-hmm. and fruity and not very smoky. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you mentioned one earlier, a cocktail earlier, that's kind of quintessential when I, I think of using um kind of those pd smoky style scotches like the penicillin is penicillin yeah is is a modern classic in my opinion yep. and, if, and if anybody listening to this podcast has not had one like turn this off come back to us like after you make one but definitely make one and enjoy it because it is absolutely it yeah. is like the one of the best examples of using uh, scotch in yeah um, in a cocktail so. yeah and it also uses just a little bit so mm-hmm. you know just it just adds that subtle nose uh not really a lot of flavor so I think the penicillin is the is a perfect cocktail to you know get acquainted and start with uh, Isla Scotch, and then after that you know you can maybe use it as a base ingredient in so many other cocktails. But yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I think this brings up a really good point too: is like those scotches, um, specifically the Isla Scotches, tend to be really dominant. They they tend to overpower a lot of other ingredients. So pulling the amount that you're using in a cocktail back to like half an ounce or even a quarter of an ounce in some cases, like that's all you need. So yep. they tend to be a little more expensive, but you can definitely, a little bit goes a long way is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and that is how I started. I mean, you know, making penicillin and riffs like that. And then I started with making sour drinks, uh, pairing it with more aggressive flavors, like, you know, fresh fruit mm-hmm. and um, uh, even curry leaves, you know, curry leaves go absolutely well with uh, Isla Scotch. So you know, there are different combinations you can try, but definitely, yeah, when you start with a, a PT scotch, a little goes a long way. So I think that's that's a good way to, you know, just get acquainted and uh, get to know uh, that, that scotch. Yeah, and uh, kind of to your point, uh, one of the points we made earlier about how expensive it is, you know, um, you can just invest in one bottle and use it very sparingly through a lot of cocktails, but I agree, like there's there's something really amazing for me about those kind of really dominant, real, real peat forward, smoky uh, scotches that um, you just can't really find in other ingredients since, you know, except for maybe mezcal uh, has some of those characters as well, but uh, the, it's a pretty special ingredient once you get a bottle of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, I think since I started making cocktails, I haven't gone through a lot of Isla Scotch, maybe a couple of bottles because, mm-hmm. you know, you just use a little bit 
and uh, you know it, it just stays there on your shelf you know it's a uh, sort of very difficult to get uh, you know finish up the bottle but then you know just a little bit and it's it's amazing in cocktail so yeah yeah absolutely i think i'm still i still have a lot of the uh, same bottles that i bought many years ago for the same reason and um i will say i put those away when my scotch drinking friends come over <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Also, it's gonna be gone in the night so yeah yeah definitely the good stuff uh, <laughs> so um one of the one of the fun topics i always like to talk about is since you've created so many different drinks and experimented so uh kind of with with cocktails have you ever made some cocktails that were just terrible like you, you put them together and you're like man this is gonna be so good like I'm, I'm, this is going to be amazing. And then once you put the ingredients together, you're like, Whoa, that's really bad. I, I have. Yeah. A lot of them actually. Uh, <laughs> one that I can think of is, uh, so I was trying to make, um, an Indian old fashioned drift. Uh-huh. So uh, back in India, we have this, uh, beetle leaf. So it's kind of a leaf. Uh, and when you eat it, it's kind of very spicy. So usually you, you know, you put, put in some spices, uh, some sugar and you know you just you, you eat it that way so you know it's it's like a after dinner sort of digestive oh sure okay. kind of thing so i was trying to make like an old-fashioned you know uh with beetle leaf and uh, uh rose syrup and uh i used uh, a scotch which had a just a little bit of peat so it was like 25% you know isla scotch and then mm-hmm. 75% was the highland scotch so it was like a uh, you know like a fusion scotch mm-hmm. and on paper i thought you know it would taste really good you know just a little bit of smoke and you know uh, the spiciness from the beetle leaf and i had it and it just didn't work i mean <laughs> it, it's it's amazing how you know you think that you know it might not be really amazing, but it should work and it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so that was one of those cocktails, you know, it really didn't work. I mean, I, I, after that, I was like going back and checking, you know, where did I go wrong? Maybe I did something wrong, you know, why doesn't it work? <laughs> but that definitely didn't work. So, yeah, so that that's one of the cocktails that I can definitely remember. Absolutely disastrous. Yeah, so, yeah. it's so. funny because I've done this, you know, for restaurants and stuff, we're all... Mm-hmm. He's sitting in bed. I'm like, man, I got this great idea. I can't wait to go back to the bar. I'm going to put it all together. It's going to be amazing. And then, you know, get all my prep done, get everything set up. I make the cocktail and I'm like, I don't know why, but it's so <laughs> bad. Like, yeah. it makes sense. But when you exactly. actually put, you know, all the ingredients together, something doesn't mesh, match up. And it's like, yep, yeah, nope. Back true, to the drawing board. I think that's the thing about cocktails, right? Um, there are certain rules, uh, I guess, that, you know, uh bartenders have said like you know there are certain flavors that will go well with whiskey or with mm-hmm. tequila and you can put it on paper but it's not every time that it's gonna work really and sometimes uh, you might have ingredients which you think are definitely not gonna work mm-hmm. and you just try to make a cocktail and it just works so perfectly well so i think um yeah maybe you know there are certain ingredients which might pair mm-hmm. the two main ingredients you're trying to get together well uh but yeah i mean you know i mean nothing is set in stone you know it's well, just I mean, experimentation and yeah it yeah, might work it might not work point. you know it's like cocktails should be fun we should experiment with them you know exactly. rules are there for for ease like to guide people into you know to yeah. get them to learn but i think once you understand kind of the basics i think it's there's a lot of room for experimentation and, right. and kind of pushing boundaries yeah um, yeah like don't be scared to experiment right just go out there have fun it might not work it might work but there's always like a learning curve uh, it's always a lesson in case it don't, doesn't work you might put it back in your book saying okay now i remember mm-hmm. that these combinations don't work well so you know I mean, it's, it's, it's better for you, you know, as someone who tries to make cocktails that you have some knowledge that, you know, I've done this, uh, previously, I don't want to do the same mistake now. So it's just going to help you, you know, make better drinks, better cocktails. So, yep. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. There's the experience is so, um, vital for like making some really great cocktails and learning along the way. Absolutely. Now, what are um, some of your favorite creations that you've done in the past? Like what are some of the, the interesting things you've tried that actually did work out? 
So um, uh, there's this one cocktail which uses Isla Scotch mm-hmm. with uh, grenadine and curry leaves. So it's essentially a whiskey sour, but grenadine as a sweetener mm-hmm. and some curry leaves. And it just works absolutely well. Uh, so I think it was made by Phil Ward from Death and Company. And um, I thought, you know, it, it's it's an absolutely delicious cocktail. Why don't I try to make a riff uh, out of it? So um, I used some freshly muddled strawberries. Mm-hmm. And then I used some Isla Scotch with mezcal. Yeah, a little bit of mezcal, a little bit of rye as well. Mm-hmm. And then I split the, the sweetener base uh, with cinnamon and mm-hmm. maple syrup. Ooh. Yeah, so it's essentially, it's like strawberries, uh, rye whiskey, Isla Scotch, mezcal, lemon juice, cinnamon, and maple syrup. And then, you know, chicken cocktail, pour over, you know, a big block of ice, and you garnish it with a curry leaf. And it tastes absolutely amazing. So That's, I think, wow. yeah, yeah. So that is one of, uh, you know, my, my favorite cocktails uh, that I have, you know, riffed, um, definitely. And then, um, so my wife, she loves flips a lot, uh-huh. you know, with egg and heavy cream. So I kind of, kind of wanted to, you know, make something for her. So this was one of the other cocktails that I made. Yeah. So it has some cognac and some whiskey and uh, saffron infused Benedictine as a modifier. Yeah. Just half an ounce of it. Yeah. And then uh, cream and then one whole egg and then some sugar syrup and, you know, just shake it and, you know, just serve it like a flip and it's absolutely delicious because Benedictine has some of those saffron flavors. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like as an Indian, you know, we have used saffron a lot. We use saffron a lot in our sweets and our food. So the first time I ever smelled Benedictine, I got those saffron flavors. I'm, I'm like, this is a saffron liqueur for me, Mm -hmm. you know, out of anything else because it, it has such a strong saffron aroma. So I was like, maybe I'll infuse it with some more saffron, uh, you know, get it, get it more saffrony and, and pair it with uh, cognac and whiskey. And it, it really goes well and it's absolutely delicious. It sounds amazing, especially when you add, you know, kind of the heavier kind of weight of the egg and the cream to it. Uh, it sounds yeah. like a really, really delicious drink. Yeah. I never would have thought of like just boosting up the uh, the saffron and the Benedictine. That's really, really fun. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. And then saffron with uh, uh, milk, mm-hmm. a heavy cream really works well. Interesting. Yeah, saffron and milk is, uh, it's, like, it's like a staple back home in India. If you have some milk and you want to, you know, make it a more exotic kind of uh, milk, then you put some saffron. Uh, you put some pistachio and cardamom and it absolutely is delicious. So I was like, you know, in flips, you use heavy cream, saffron. I think it will work pretty well. And it did work well. Uh, my wife absolutely loved it. Uh, it's, it's one of, a, you know, it's one of her favorite cocktails that she uh, has me make every time, every That's- time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's absolutely delicious. So. That sounds amazing. It sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. think if anybody's listening here, I think they just have a new flavor combination they need to try out now and definitely a new cocktail for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cognac, whiskey and flips is absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. I love how you're kind of experimenting with um, split basing. Like it sounds like a lot of the time you're going, you're reaching outside of whiskey to bring in more flavors and add, adding that to the cocktail. That's that's a really cool technique. And I think um you know, something that really adds a lot more flavor to a drink is kind of reaching outside that main base spirit um, to offer some variety in a drink. Um, right. Very cool. Yeah. And then I think uh, most people would think that, you know, whiskey is supposed to be, you know, it goes only with certain flavors. But, you know, you can just combine whiskey with uh, tiki ingredients. For example, mm-hmm. pineapple really goes well with pineapple, you know, sure. in tiki drinks. I think uh, using whiskey, uh, rum is usually used in tiki drinks, but if you, you know, substitute rum with whiskey, it gives it a little more character, a different character. And I think it goes pretty well. So, you know, if there are any tiki drinks and you just want to, you know, experiment, you just substitute it with uh, your favorite whiskey. And I think it works pretty well. So, yeah. Very cool. And I could see like a, like a painkiller or something like that with a little float or uh, some uh, Islay uh, whiskey in there as well. 
add that smoky element into it. You know, you got all those tropical flavors. I could, I bet that would be phenomenal. Definitely. Yeah. I think it will go pretty well. Yep. Perfect. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing on uh, tonight. So uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, I might have to make another trip to the uh, grocery store after that one. Get, get those <laughs> ingredients. <laughs> yep. um, so when you're making, when, when you, I don't, I think we've talked um, about the cocktails and it seems like you kind of reach all over the place when, with base ingredients and, and specifically around whiskey. Um, but I was going to ask you, like when you're experimenting with cocktails um, and making cocktails, are there any brands you really kind of focus on uh, or brands that you love to use in cocktails? Oh, um, I mean, there are so many. With whiskeys, you have these wide array of brands. So uh, since I started, what I tend to do is every time, um, you know, I finish up a bottle of whiskey, um, I'll just try to get a different brand than mm -hmm. what I've already tried. That way, you know, I tried try different brands. And then I know, you know, which ones really uh, uh, work well with my taste. So doing that in the past, I think for bourbons, I tend to go with... Uh, Elijah Craig and mm -hmm. Four Roses. I think it really works well, you know, in the cocktails that I try to make. Mm -hmm. um, with rye whiskeys, I think uh, Overholt and uh, Rittenhouse rye, uh, they really work well. The, the thing about rye whiskeys is I think uh, they tend to be so cheap, but so amazing mm -hmm. in quality as compared to other type of whiskeys. You know, I mean, Rittenhouse rye, I think, it costs you like 20 bucks here and it's pretty, pretty good stuff. So I tend to go with uh, those brands. Um, as far as scotch is concerned uh, for making cocktails, monkey shoulder. Yeah, that's, that's, a good one. that's my absolute favorite. You know, it has those dry fruit notes. It's a little nutty and it works perfect with, uh, especially with sour drinks. So I tend to go with monkey shoulder a lot. Um, if I feel like, you know, sipping, a whiskey, I usually tend to go with a little darker whiskey with some uh, chocolate flavors. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Dalmo, 12-year-old, is, is really good. It's one of my favorites. And then uh, we have Japanese whiskey. So I always try to keep at least one Japanese bottle at my bar because uh, my brother, he stays in Irvine, like an hour away from here. And um, he visits us uh, every other weekend. Mm -hmm. And whiskey and soda is his favorite drink. So, you know, with Japanese, uh, Japanese whiskey and soda just goes perfectly well. So I always tend to keep one bottle. Uh, I think Hibiki is, is my favorite because it's not very light and it also doesn't tend to be very dark. So it's perfect for, you know, like stirred drinks, um, mm -hmm. just having uh, on an, with a high ball. It goes really perfectly well. So yeah, um, those, those are my, some of my favorite brands to use. Yep. Yeah, I think I echo kind of everything that you said. Those those are always kind of staples in uh, our house too. Uh, the written house, um, I fully agree. But the problem with the written house for me is I go through it so quickly <laughs> 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 because well, it's just um, it's such a good classic. Yeah, yeah, it's it so is. Good, it especially is. for the price, you can't really beat it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I tend to go with written house a lot. Uh, sometimes I try to mix in. Uh, maybe get uh, the old overhaul. Mm -hmm. uh, I think wild turkey rye also is pretty good. So I sometimes get that. But Rittenhouse is like like a staple. Yeah, you absolutely need to have that. Uh, you know, if you love your rye whiskeys, I think Rittenhouse is just just really good. So, yeah. Yeah, agreed. And um, so you mentioned uh, the highball a couple times, but uh, I was going to ask you another question about just simple, easy kind of like, cocktails to make with whiskey um obviously the highball definitely falls into there and any other um things that you've uh, come across that you really um, enjoy for for quick whiskey cocktails so uh, the banana boulevardier that's that's really one of my favorites so <laughs> i always try to keep like a banana liqueur bottle at mm -hmm. my bar so that you know if i feel like having a stirred whiskey cocktail that's one of my absolute favorites you know uh sweet mahmood campari uh, put a whiskey in there. It can be your choice of whiskey, you know, scotch or maybe bourbon mm -hmm. and just a little bit of that banana liqueur and just, you don't even have to stir it and pour it. You just, you know, stir it in the glass or ice and it's absolutely perfect. 
Um, other than that, just the whiskey highball. You know, it's uh, absolutely delicious, very refreshing. So yeah. if I have some light scotch or Japanese whiskey around, I think that's uh, another cocktail that I always reach out for. You know, like just you know, make a quick uh, cocktail. You know, pour in some whiskey or ice, pour in some uh, soda water, and you know, there you have it. So it's, it's really good. Um, other than that, uh, if I have really good uh, dark whiskey, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, a good Highland whiskey, I always tend to just you know sip it over ice. You know, because uh, it, uh, I think with Highland whiskey, it has those uh, dark notes. I think which when you sip, you really get those dark notes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, chocolate and the dark fruit. And it's just delicious or ice. So yeah, I, I tend to, you know, drink it just like that or ice if I have some good Highland scotch. Yeah, that's definitely kind of a nice luxury, especially like when it's out cold, it's raining like it was yesterday here in the area. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just a glass of uh, scotch whiskey is pretty hard to beat. It um, is delightful. Yeah, and I remember when I was standing bar, we had we had a couple of people. Obviously, Jack, Jack and ginger ale um, are a great combination. Like a nice Tennessee whiskey mm -hmm. and uh, ginger ale was always kind of it's just kind of a classic. Um, Jack and Coke's obviously in um, long history, but with I had one regular that came up and he would always specifically ask for Jameson and ginger. And I was like, Oh, that's, it sounds really good. I've never had it. And I, I kept trying to persuade him, like try the ginger beer with it. Cause it's spicier. It has more character. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, it's not as good. So then I tried it. And just that combination of ginger ale and Jameson was so simple. And like the sweetness of the two kind of lined up. So that way it wasn't, they weren't fighting for dominance. It just kind of like this nice, subtle, easy to drink, you know, two-part cocktail. And that's, that's been one of my kind of favorite go-tos, um, okay. especially if I'm going to like a neighborhood bar um, or somebody that doesn't have, you know, if, if I'm concerned about, I really want a cocktail, but uh, I don't know how the quality of the cocktail is going to be. I'll just kind of go with that one. It's a nice safe bet, you know, everybody can make it. So that's kind of one of my default cocktails uh, yeah. these days now too. I've never tried that, but uh, I can see, you know, how it works, you know, just take some gems and very light and crisp. Mm -hmm. and some ginger ale I think yeah yeah I can see how you know why it's so tasty yeah, Definitely yeah. Gonna try it like it's a, yeah the I was like oh man but ginger beer is gonna be so much better but it really wasn't it was <laughs> like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> um so if people wanted to kind of get a sneak peek on some of the stuff that you're creating and some of the stuff you're doing because your your flavor combinations are amazing like just talking to you about whiskey and and some of the experimentation you. you've been doing on, on your end is it's really fascinating. So if more people wanted to kind of follow you on your cocktail journey and experimentation. Um, what's a good way for them to do that? So I have my Instagram account. It's mm -hmm. uh, SNE underscore DC, uh, where I'll usually, you know, archive all my creations. So when I first started getting into cocktails, I was making cocktails at home and I was improving, you know, slowly but surely you know mm -hmm. instead of using ice from the freezer i was making my own clear ice and uh, uh you know i was just making it for my wife for my brother a couple of friends coming home over the weekend and they were like these creations are very like they're really good you know this is something that you get at a craft cocktail bar so why don't mm -hmm. you take pictures and just archive it you know all your creations all your experiments so I think this was back in 2017. I wasn't even on Instagram at that point. And my wife, she was like, you know, take the pictures. I'm going to handle your account. You know, I'm going to post those pictures there, you know, just for archiving purposes, you know, something that you can just go back and look at, or, you know, oh, you know, I had made this cocktail once, which is pretty good and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I started posting it on Instagram and, uh, I started getting attention, like all there are these cocktail pages which feature, you know, cocktails from different bartenders and even home bartenders. And they try they started featuring my cocktails. And then when I used to make a cocktail, I used to usually I tag the bartender, you know, who who has the original recipe. And they would comment that, you know, hope you like it. Uh glad you made it, and things like that. And I thought, you know. Yeah, it's it's so easy to, you know, get in touch with people and, you know, just show them your creation. So I just started posting and, you know, uh, it has been a really amazing journey since then. So, yeah, so if, you know, folks want to just uh, look at what I'm doing or get some 
tips uh, about cocktail making, uh, things like that, they can check my Instagram handle. Uh, definitely, um, I think there's some good stuff in there. So, yeah, sure. I definitely agree with you. That's actually how we found you. Is we were going mm-hmm. through um, potential people to talk about whiskey cocktails, mm-hmm. and uh, we came across your Instagram handle, and we're like, we gotta, we gotta talk. We gotta talk to this guy. Um, <laughs> so I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think um, definitely go check out the Instagram handle, and it will definitely inspire you to to create some great cocktails. Um, so Snehal, thank you so much, man. I definitely appreciate it. Um, and one last thing, um, is there anything you're working on that you want to share before we head out? Um, yeah, a couple of things. So, uh-huh. um, uh, the Avery cocktail book. So my wife uh, gifted me the cocktail book, uh, back in April mm-hmm. and they have some pretty amazing take techniques of making cocktails. So, you know, the techniques that you usually would use in making food and they're applying it to making cocktails. So that's the book I'm just going through. You know, it's kind of an experiment. You really have to, you know, go over there, get the ingredients and, uh, you know, just for making one cocktail, there is a lot of prep, but then it's interesting and it's a lot of fun. You know, once you get into cocktails, uh, the prep is as good as, you know, when you actually make the co- cocktail. Mm-hmm. So that is really something fun that I'm trying. And uh, uh, one more thing is like uh, with my Indian background, uh, I'm kind of starting to work with cocktails with like an Indian or Asian twist. Mm -hmm. So like uh, in India and even across Asia, uh, we use a lot of spices in our foods. So I think how to marry those spices and make uh, interesting combinations, um, you know, make interesting cocktails. So that is something that I'm really getting into, like concentrating on that. So I guess uh, in the future on my Instagram page, I think folks are going to find more of those interesting combinations with a lot of like, you know, Indian inspired, uh, Asian inspired ingredients used in cocktails. So yeah, that is something I'm working on right now. Well, we'll definitely uh, have the link in the show notes to your Instagram handle and uh, definitely recommend it. Um, like I said, it inspired us to, to reach out and see if you're interested in joining us. So, um, yeah, definitely go to the show notes and we'll have a link there. So, uh, Snehal, like I said, man, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll have to reach out to you uh, again in the future. Likewise, Chris, thank you so much for, you know, having me on the podcast. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I've heard about your podcast before. So, you know, when you guys contacted me for like a podcast conversation, I was really excited and it was a li- a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, I really I enjoy agree. talking I about whiskey cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. Well, thank you again, Sehal, and we'll talk. Thank soon. you. All right. Cheers. So once again, thank you to our special guest, Nehal, for joining us and sharing all of those really cool um, tips and techniques for making whiskey cocktails. I know there's a couple new ingredients that I'm gonna be making um, as a result of this interview. Definitely the saffron infused Benedictine with the milk just sounds too good to pass up. So I'm definitely gonna have to try uh, making a flip like the one he mentioned. Um, Also, the Banana Boulevardier. It sounds so unusual to me that I have to try this. Um, So I'll definitely be doing that. So we'll have some links uh, in the show notes over at abarabove.com. You can definitely find his Instagram handle there and I highly recommend checking it out. So once again, thank you to Snehal for uh, joining us. Now, the last thing is, um, I know if you're listening to this podcast, you probably love love cocktails. Um, Head on over to our store over at abarabove.com and you can find some great bar tools I know you're going to love. We special make every single one of them, um, basically addressing all the things that pissed me off about bar tools when I was a bartender. So uh, we definitely uh, hope you enjoy them. Um, So head on over to abarabove.com for the bar tools and also the links to the show notes. Cheers everyone. (music)